The next main series Pokemon game, as we all know, is confirmed to be coming out on the Nintendo Switch, making it the first core game in the series to be released on the home console. And with the Pokemon series moving to a much more powerful console, means a lot more possibilities for the next game. However, with so many good things to come for the franchise, there are also many things to consider as Pokemon moves forward. Things that of course Game Freak will overcome, but we'll still have to look out for eventually. So, here are five... problems that Pokemon will eventually face. Problems might not be the most accurate word to use, but for this video, it'll work I guess. Number 1. Leaks A perfect example of this was the Chinese leaks that revealed the final evolutions of the Alola starters. Now as nice as it was to see the final evolutions early, it really does ruin the fun of them being revealed. Imagine how much more exciting the starter evolution trailer would have been if we didn't know what the Pokemon were going to look like beforehand. In fact, I'm pretty sure the entire Sun and Moon game was leaked days before release, leading to things like new Pokemon, characters, and worst of all, the story being spoiled for a lot of people. Game Freak definitely took note of this, which is probably why there was no demo for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and there'll most likely be no demo for any future Pokemon game. As for leaks that are fake, while these definitely aren't as problematic as real leaks, they do a lot of the time build up people's hopes, up to the point where they might be let down. For example, do you remember these guys? If the next Pokemon game on Switch is Generation 8, with a brand new region, and new Pokemon, I know for a fact there are going to be people who will be disappointed because the water starter isn't this. I also used to think why companies couldn't just announce that a fake leak was fake if they saw one getting a lot of attention, but that wouldn't be a good idea if, well, the leaks are actually real. While fake leaks can get people excited, real leaks a lot of the time can be a big problem. If the first Pokemon Switch trailer got leaked, the eventual reveal wouldn't be nearly as exciting. Number 2. The Chinese Zodiac Now let me start by saying that the Firestarter Pokemon being based on animals that are part of the Chinese Zodiac technically isn't confirmed. Hell, I wouldn't say that I'm 100% convinced. You're trying to tell me that Cyndaquil is supposed to be a rat? When it's based on one of these? And even if this theory is true, I can almost guarantee you that it wasn't planned from the beginning. But considering how Game Freak's Firestarter picks have gone so far, I do see it being possible that this theory is true. Syndical is a bit of a stretch, but it kind of fits, I guess. So for the sake of this video, let's say that the Chinese Zodiac theory is true. The question is now, what happens at Generation 13? If we do eventually get a Fire Rabbit, Snake, Horse, Goat, and Ox starter, what happens next? Well, I see there being a few possibilities. One, we get to Generation 13, and the cycle restarts. Maybe going in a different order this time. Two. Generation 12 will be the last generation of Pokemon, only because the Chinese Zodiac ended. Definitely the most likely reason. 3. When they eventually use all the animals part of the Chinese Zodiac, Game Freak will move on to something else for the Firestarters. 4. This theory is complete bullshit and it's completely coincidental that any of the Firestarters share anything to do with the Chinese Zodiac. So overall, Probably not much of a problem for Game Freak, but still something to keep in mind if the Chinese Zodiac theory is true. Number 3. Remix Now let me ask you this. Do you think within the next 15 to 20 years, we're going to get a remake of Pokemon Sun and Moon? If not, then do you think that we'll ever get remakes of Pokemon Sun and Moon? If your answer is still no, then tell me. When do you think Game Freak will stop making main series game remakes? After they make Diamond and Pearl remakes? After they make Black and White remakes? Maybe Auras was the last remake? As long as Pokemon continues, remakes are always going to be up in the air. If Diamond and Pearl remakes finally happen, eventually people will wonder if Black and White will get remade, and the cycle will probably continue. So, how could remakes be problematic in any way? Well apart from the fanbase always expecting them. Because of the changes that have been made over the years to Pokemon, and in some cases video games in general, remakes are most likely going to be a bit more difficult than they used to be. A great example of this is when remaking Gold and Silver, Game Freak had to change the game corner to keep the E rating for the game, since the game corner technically counted as gambling. This is why the Gen 1 and 2 games that are released on the eShop have the 12 rating. Even worse, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire didn't even have anything to replace Ruby and Sapphire's game corner, and when Diamond and Pearl remakes eventually happen, you can bet there are going to be some changes made. 
Sun and Moon made an effort to ditch HMs, however in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, HMs were a pretty big part, and since the gaps between a main series Pokemon game and its remakes continues to be longer, who knows what stuff Game Freak might have to change, as well as additional things to take into account as the years go on. Number 4. Pokemon Professors So as we all know, all Pokemon Professors are named after trees. In fact, I tweeted out a few months ago that in the Wikipedia page that contains all types of trees would be all future Pokemon Professor names, which is technically true if you think about it. However, if Game Freak continues to create new generations, to keep the franchise alive for as long as they can, with every new generation introducing a brand new Pokemon Professor, there's one problem they're going to run into. Eventually, Game Freak will run out of trees. I mean, think about it. They've already gone through seven different tree names so far. In fact, more than seven if you count some of the other games. It won't be long until the only trees left for Game Freak to use will be the ones with the stupid names. Like Professor Shagbark, and Professor Sausage, Professor Monkey Puzzle, Professor Cannonball, Professor Green Ash, Professor Blue Ash, Professor White Willow, Professor Black Oak, Professor Yellow Birch. Every tree one by one until there aren't any trees left to use. So, what are they going to do? Are they eventually going to start naming professors after plants? No, they can't do that. Pokemon professors must be named after trees, and there's only one way for Game Freak to carry on this tradition for as long as they can. We need more trees. Preferably ones that sound sensible. More trees, at least until Game Freak stop making generations or... I don't know, the world ends. Either way, the more trees we have, the longer the franchise can survive without stupid sounding professor names. Oh, and uh, Game Freak, if you're by any chance watching this, uh, there is a tree known as the Dragon Blood Tree. J just a suggestion. And the final thing that we're going to be talking about, the thing that Pokemon will inevitably face in the future, is... Not meeting everyone's expectations. With every main series game that comes out, what are people's hopes? They want Pokemon following you? They want a Battle Frontier? They want multiple regions? Do I want these things in the next main series game? Absolutely. However, once we get these features, if they aren't in the next Pokemon game as well, people are going to be disappointed. One of the things that let down people with Auras was because there was no character customization. They could have easily brought it back, but they chose not to, saying it was something exclusive to Kalos at the time. Of course, this feature did come back in the 7th gen games. However, if character customization doesn't come back for the Pokemon Switch game, that to a lot of people is going to be a disappointment. That's also going to be the case if other wanted mechanics come back to the Switch game and don't return for the next game. On top of this, with the next main series game being the first coming to a home console, it makes for more possibilities like better graphics, a bigger region, with the game being on a much more powerful console. So it's possible that if the main series were to go back to handheld, these games wouldn't be capable of some of the things like graphics and region size that the home console games were able to do. Now of course, this wasn't really the case for other home console Pokemon games, like the Stadium series, XD Gale of Darkness, Battle Revolution. However, there's a difference here. Those home console games weren't main series games. This new home console Pokemon title on the Switch is a main series game. The Switch is also capable of a lot more things than handheld consoles are, and even previous home consoles, meaning more possible features for the Pokemon Switch game. Although, if Nintendo did choose to make another handheld console in the future, it would most likely be capable of a lot more things. Now, if you completely disagree with me on this part of the video, I understand. Heart Gold and Soul Silver, for example, had Pokemon following you, and the next main series games didn't. Although, I can't be the only one that was a bit let down by Black and Whites for not having Pokemon following you. What I'm trying to say is that people are expecting big things from the next main series game, since it is coming to the Switch which has so far given us some pretty damn impressive titles. These games can either set the bars for future main series games extremely high, or let some people down by not including a specific feature that they wanted. Either way, I'm still looking forward to whatever Game Freak has in store for us. Although one thing I will say is that if we don't get a Professor Dragon Blood soon, I will be a bit disappointed. So, I hope you enjoyed this discussion type video. I've wanted to talk a bit about Pokemon Professor names and the Chinese Zodiac for a while, and I figured that this topic suited them. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Pokemon videos in the future, and until next time, thanks so much for watching.